The adventurous travels of some people leave a mark on history. Some lead to the beginning of a new era. By exploring the unseen world and culture, they become the agents who connect East and West. That was the time trade and religion started to search for its base grounds in several regions. They laid the footsteps for more to follow by crossing mountains, oceans, towns and villages, from king's courts to death rows. Some of them were patrons and some of them were outlaws. From Atlas Mountains to the land of the Golden Horde, from the caravan sarais of eastern China to the land of olives, from western Europe to the western gods. What makes them take a leap that nobody has ever taken? Who were they? The explorers who navigate from continents to big oceans are being discovered here. You are hearing Traveler's Diary with Muhammad Mukhtar on YouTube Podcast. Nicola Polo became cautious when he heard the news of the defeat of Crusaders. The political change in the Mediterranean coast has worried him. He has discussed his worries with his brother Maffeo in Venice. The family had a great investment in trade between Venice and the Middle East for a long time. In the course of time, their family had acquired a great wealth and prestige. So obviously this news was a sad story for them as their trade was interrupted. Then only Niccolo heard about the Khan of Volga who was the de facto ruler of the Northern Mongol Empire. Niccolo invested all his property in jewels and set off for the Volga river. He doubled their wealth there and traveled eastward to Bukhara where he established his business venture. This political relations and influence with the East and its powerful leaders paved the polos, especially for Niccolo's son Marco, a more pioneering success in exploration towards the East. Marco Polo was born in 1254 in Venice, present-day Italy, a beautiful city of Republican and mercantile tradition. As it is mentioned before, he was born into a prominent wealthy family. He was also a great merchant who traveled from Europe to China through the Silk Route and stayed there for quite a long time. His adventures and experiences were recorded in his book The Million. His journey began in 1260 and lasted for 24 years. Marco also joined with his father Niccolo and his uncle Mafio for business trips to the Mongol Kingdom. The trip started from Venice to Acre present-day Israel. After some days, they reached the Strait of Hormuz in Persia. From there, they decided to not to cross the sea to India, but proceed through the highland of Central Asia all the way to the Mongol capital. Marco, in his own words, describes the valleys of Afghanistan, how beautiful there was and about the hospitality of the people. They remained there for one more year because the group had been affected with malaria. During this time, Marco has visited the mountain regions of Afghanistan. He visited the mighty Hindu Kush region, Kafiristan, and perhaps Kashmir also. They continue travel through the highlands of Central Asia. They have now reached the outskirts of Mongol Great Khan's outer territory, what is now the Uyghur Autonomous Region, Xinjiang province of China. By this point, they have entered the northern Silk Route. The Polos doesn't stop there. They travel further east. Now they have to cross the dangerous Gobi Desert by passing through the Turfan, Hami, Dunhang, Hexi Corridor. They have finally arrived in Beijing in 1266. At that time, China was ruled by Hulagu Khan's brother, Kublai Khan. Kublai Khan was delighted to see foreigners and he treated them very well. Kublai Khan was the fifth great Khan of the Mongol dynasty and the founder of the Yuan dynasty. Kublai Khan wants to know more about Europe and about the Pope and the Roman Church. 
as he was interested in Christianity he sent the Polo brothers to Europe back to deliver the message to the Pope he wants the Pope to send 100 learned Christian men to teach Christianity and science back in China interestingly he also requested the oil for him from the lamb at the holy sepulcher in Jerusalem it took three years for the Polo brothers to reach home also with a great diplomatic passport which is an inscribed golden tablet that safeguarded them all the way to Europe. Marco Polo was officially appointed to high post in Kublai Khan's administration. His multilingual ability and experiences from traveling was his treasure. Polo was sent to different places such as uh, outskirts of China, Burma and India as an emissary of Kublai Khan. Most of these places were then alien to Europe till the 19th century. Polo had become the most trusted man in Kublai Khan's court. They have the freedom to go to Europe and come back. Now the Polos are rich and influential. They have been assigned to do one last mission. As Kublai Khan is becoming old, he needs the Polos to escort the Mongol princess Kokachin to her betrothed Persian prince Argun. Marco Polo set his journey to the Strait of Hormuz by sea. It was the most difficult trip according to him. He lost around 600 of his crew during the voyage. It took two years to reach the destination as they passed through the South China Sea to Sumatra and over the Indian Ocean to the Persian Gulf. Marco Polo and his caravan were honored and respected because of the golden tablet by Kublai Khan even after his death. Polo returned to Venice by sailing over the Black Sea to Constantinople and from there he crossed the Mediterranean Sea to reach Venice in 1295. He was away from his home for 24 years and he returned with loaded treasure from the Far East. But unfortunately, three years after returning to Venice, he was imprisoned in his own home, which ironically never happened when he was out there in the dangerous Gobi Desert in the Far East. Marco Polo was captured by Genoese forces as he was commanding a Venetian fleet in the war against Geneva. But he was later released. He did not travel far ever again. He remained in Venice with his wife and three daughters until his death in 1324.